The number of people falling victim to fake job offers is on the rise, with scammers increasingly using deceptive job adverts to trick job seekers into handing over personal information or even their hard-earned money. Scott Stiles, head of fair hiring at Seek Asia, discusses the sophisticated psychological tactics used to gain a victim's trust. Now, what's happened is with the proliferation of technology allowing for more anonymous transactions, anonymous communications, the scammers are now focusing on building trust with their victims mm -hmm. first. And so it's a big shift in how they communicate, right? Because it went from, I want to, if I'm going to have to call you through a regular phone, that could probably be tracked, so I want to limit those communications. Whereas WhatsApp or, and other kind of messaging tools can be tracked, they can have you know, months and months of, of interactions. And so what these scammers are doing is they're actually investing in the long term of the relationship and trying to rip, you know, and trying to kind of take advantage of their victims. This is why this is so kind of, um, why we take it so seriously is because the psychology of somebody that's leaving a job, right? Say, say you, you, a new opportunity comes to you, you're excited about it, you tell your friends and family, you go through all these steps, right? You, you, you talk to the, the interviewer, you, you know, check them out online, they offer you more money than you're making, you're all excited, you may even resign from your current post, you've told your family that you've got this great new high paying job. And so when that person who's a scammer then says, oh, all you need to do is pay us, you know, 2,000 ringgit for your, your computer equipment to get started. Oh, there's another 2,000 ringgit in, in onboarding and, and training. When they do that, the, tr the person is so heavily invested that it's really hard for them to, to then pull out of the situation. And so the, the psychology behind these scammers is, is really harmful and scary. And that's why for us, our focus is how can we create this awareness so that when people start to see the signs, they can start to pull back and say, wait, this isn't something that I wanna go forward with. And then on the flip side, make sure that on our platforms is, are as clean as we possibly can make them. And when there's issues or questions, people can report it so that we can investigate further. Scott shares some of the key red flags to look out for to avoid falling victim to a job scam. So the first thing would be kind of that, that gut check of, is it too good to be true, would be the first thing that I would ask myself. The second one would be, are they reaching out through social media or are they following a channel that makes sense for a normal hiring process, right? And that's a, that's a thing that I think we can kind of look at. Are you looking for a job? Um, did they contact you by name or did they send a blast out on, on one of these messaging platforms, right? And then are there vague or changing job requirements, right? What we've heard from, from, from folks and what we've read in reports is that a lot of times the job requirements are shifting or changing. Um, as people are going through the, the recruitment and onboarding process. And so do those make sense? Um, and so a lot of these kind of signals or triggers are what you want to look for. And for me, the biggest kind of risk environment is in that migration environment, right? And so once somebody starts to migrate, once they start to take those steps, you have visas, you have potentially uh, visa violations. And so it's making sure that if you do go abroad for a job, you have the proper visa in place, you reached out to your consulate and made sure that the, the company is real and that, that everything is legit. Um, and that also you've built kind of a network in place when you get there so that there's some people that you can contact if things go awry.